Uh, uh, did you have, uh, honey, ah, uh, this is Rowan, and let's, uh, let's, let's do an A to Z of goth music and musicians. How about that? Hi, cat. A would be for Alien Sex Fiend. Probably their best-known songs would be Ignore the Machine, I'm Her Frankenstein, and Stuff the Turkey, which gets a lot of play in the States around Thanksgiving, but it is their Christmas single. Can't forget that, can we? Uh, their genre, I would have to call uh, synth-based what-the-fuck punk, because... Uh, what else? Like, like, listen to them. Just they're they're like the primus of goth, as in like Winamp really should give them their own genre. Cause <laughs> oh god, I'm an old person talking about Winamp. I still use Winamp. Ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, B. I'm gonna be lame, and I'm gonna say Bauhaus, but. Then I'm going to rethink that and go with my favorite that starts with B, which would be the Bolshoi. Uh, they, their best-known songs would be uh, Lindy's Party, which was featured on Mick Mercer's uh, Gothic Rock compilations, I believe, Volume 2. Uh, Lindy's Party, uh, Sunday, um, Sunday Morning, uh, uh, Happy Boy, uh... The latter being about a school shooting a good nearly two decades before they even came to be erroneously associated with goths. <clears throat> ah, see, we've got Corpus Delecti, a ah, French quote-unquote Cold Wave Band. Uh, I've also seen them referred to as Dark Wave and Gothic Rock, but in France, around the time that they formed in the mid-80s, their, the local name for the aesthetically, orally, nearly, as in orally, nearly identical um, music scene, the local name in French was Cold Wave. Got a discussion coming up about this eventually. Ah, uh, unfortunately, I, I, I can't think of their most popular songs. I, I, they're one of those bands that I've always wanted to like them more than I do. I enjoy their music when I hear it, but ask me to name a single, I can't. I can't. I really, I should like them. I should be more into them than apparently I am. D is for Drab Majesty. They are much newer than everybody else I've named so far, because why? Goths have been making music since 1995, believe it or not. Uh, again, please don't ask me to name a, a most popular song, but they are on Bandcamp, as would many, many others that I will be listing in the description box below. Their band camps available when possible, um, other official websites available when possible. When neither are possible, I will link to Discogs or uh, E would be for Ein Sonze Ah, uh, They are another, another um, band that is practically their own genre. They are often referred to as Neue Deutsche Welle, uh, as in New German Music. They were named after the Fad Gadget song, Collapsing New People. Uh, I have not listed Fad Gadget as F, though I, I would say he's probably my favorite um, amongst the Fs that I could name, but um, uh, they, uh, they might best be known amongst the grander um, goth audience through uh, member Blixa Bargeld as uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds are a lot more palatable to most people. Uh, Neubotten is one of those one of those groups where uh, they they clearly are are very much in love with whatever the hell Genesis Peorage was doing a few years before them. Um, uh, F would be for 
fluffy, fluffy tail, but that's not a band, is it? No, I'm talking about Fields of the Nephilim. Uh, their most popular songs would include uh, Blue Water, Moonchild. Uh, they did a really great cover of Dream Home Heartache that I actually prefer to Roz Williams' cover, but that's another story for another time. Um, actually, that's about that whole story there. And uh, also, it didn't really hit as a single, but... Uh, Psychonaut Lib, which has been released in five parts, uh, many of these overlap, and there's, uh, there's a bit of a legend about Psychonaut, which is that it is allegedly, um, when it is, uh, the, the complete Psychonaut, which has yet to be released, is allegedly over 25 minutes long, and when played in its entirety, will, uh, will be be part and parcel of summoning some, um, Krollian or Sumerian entity, and Kyle McCoy has not, um, released Psychonaut in its entirety, for he fears that fans may accidentally summon something they are not prepared for, which is very nice of him to do. Very, very kind. Ah, uh, G would be for Jean Loves Jezebel, uh, originally fronted by identical twin Welsh brothers, uh, Jay and Michael Aston. They have not spoken without a lawyer between them for about 20 years. Uh, Jay is currently based in Southern California, where he has a band called Jean Loves Jezebel, though when they tour in the UK and Europe, it is... Uh, they are billed as Jay Aston's Jean Loves Jezebel. Michael Aston, too, has a band called Jean Loves Jezebel, and he is still based in the UK. And when, if ever, he tours the States, his band tours as Michael Aston's Jean Loves Jezebel. This was decided in a court case. <laughs> uh, why, why, why is anybody's guess, but I, 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 I would give, I would give, I would give Lim to see a Gene Loves Jezebel reality show. VH1, are you paying attention? Give us a Gene Loves Jezebel reality show. Do it. We need it. We need it, my precious. Uh, their best known songs would be, uh, Desire, Shaving My Neck, um, Hi. Hi, cat. Nothing about cats. Nothing that I'm aware of. H would be for her despair. Ah, uh, they've got that wonderful, um, song, I believe, is also the name of the album title, Blaspheme With Me. Uh, they've been featured on, uh, Ligia Resurrected channel, um, by my... Uh, friend Adrienne, and they have been inadvertently featured in an Instagram video of mine where Murnau, uh, <laughs> decides he wants to play with the bath water, and the, uh, the, and, um, their, their singer has decided that Murnau is the most entertaining cat he's seen on the internet. I don't know why. It, it, then again, you, you're watching this, you probably know why. And it's because this cat is, like, up my ass right now. Aren't you, honey? Aren't you? Yes, you are. Uh, I would be for the pagan dark rock band Incubus Succubus, uh, which was a band which was referenced in another video, but not really explained. Uh, they've got a lot of wonderful songs about witches and vampires. Uh, they've got songs about pagan festivals, including one explicitly titled Thalun. Uh They've got... Um, hi. Hi, cat. Cat, please. Please. Yes, we see you. They have been doing what they do since 1990 and are still very much active as a band. And they're one of the few bands where I have all of their albums. And please... So, picking any favorite songs is... is I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I... <laughs> 
Uh, but I do get around to, uh, to playing them a lot on my show, which is coming off of hiatus this week on WFKU.org. Ah, uh, hi. J would be for Japan. Often erroneously described as a new romantic group, David Sylvan actually hated that association. Uh, I'm including them amongst a gothic A to Z because... Of a lot of reasons, their music is very, very, very goth-friendly when you go to certain clubs, especially stateside. Um, it is quite common to hear at an old-school, um, goth, industrial, new wave, uh, dark, alternative-focused night, especially if we're concentrating on new, on uh, old-school music. Uh, it's very, very common to hear Japan. Uh, Mick Karn. Uh, the bassist of Japan, one of the most recognizable bassists, too. Uh, he played a fretless bass, which gave him a distinct sound, um, as, as much as his playing style did. He worked with Peter Murphy on Dolly's Car, which the, uh, the first Dolly's Car album was panned for some reason. I can't figure it out. I love Dolly's Car. I really do. And I'm not just saying that because it's named after a Captain Beefheart <laughs> track. I, I'm just... I, I do. I love Dolly's car. I love what they were doing there. And unfortunately, Mick Karn uh, passed off this mortal coil uh, some years ago. And thankfully, he was able to finish a second Dolly's car album with Peter Murphy before he left us was a uh, stage four cancer when it was discovered stage three maybe i don't know I, whichever one is like absolutely terminal don't even bother operating it'll waste your time and hours uh k would be for killing joke best known for songs such as uh 80s love like blood it's probably their most popular song 80s was featured in weird science uh which is a stupid movie right but Oh, well, what are you going to do? So, sometimes good songs go to bad films. Uh, and <laughs> I, uh, The Killing Joke is one of those bands that I always kind of wondered about because uh, they did seem very much all about the shock value with... Uh, I'm brain farting on his name, uh, it identifying as a fascist during the 80s. Uh, but this, this clearly, like, when you see a lot of other things he said, uh, it stands very contradictory to that, and so you get the impression that, like many people in the 80s, he was just going for shock value, but th that's, that's what punks did back then. They went for shock. They went to, um, attempt to put the alienation they were feeling from a society that, that let them down and put it back on them. This, uh, this... Uh, L would be for Lords of the New Church, which was one of the few gothic rock supergroups featuring... I forget who else, but... Uh, definitely featured uh, Stiv Bators, who was originally in The Dead Boys, and hailed from glorious Youngstown, Ohio. <gasps> yes, he did. Didn't he? And us short guys from Ohio, we've got to stick together. Uh, Lords of the New Church, they were a, they've been a staple on gothic rock compilations. Uh, some of their best-known songs would be uh, New Church, um... Uh, Portobello, where little boys play with dolls, which was highly inspired by the work of the New York Dolls. And, <laughs> again, just all-around wonderful. One of the very few um, gothic rock supergroups to ever exist, meaning that all members uh, were uh, had previously been in very well-known, very well-respected bands. So... If you have not heard of them, now you have. Go check them out. Oh, Dance With Me is another great one. Video, the music video for that one was directed by Derek Jarman. Ah, oh, I love Derek Jarman's films, don't I? Yes, I do. Ah, 
I'm I'm a gay with a hoity-toity accent. I kind of have to love <laughs> Derek Jarman. <laughs> ah, M is for March Violet, who gave me five dollars. Uh, no, that five dollars was from bottle returns, wasn't it? Uh, March Violets, uh, were one of the more formative bands to my tastes in, uh, gothic rock. They were one of the original Leeds bands that gave birth to what became very quickly known as that quintessential gothic rock sound. Uh, Botanic Verses, I have described as one of my formative albums, but that was actually a compilation. They did not have their first full studio album until, what year is it now? Uh, 2012, I believe. And why is this cap not coming off my water bottle? Uh, and that was Made Glorious. And I have a couple of t-shirts from that tour. Two different t-shirts. For March Violets. One of the few bands I own that many t-shirts for. Uh, March Violets were, uh, had a cameo appearance in Some Kind of Wonderful, and that is not the reason that's my favorite John Hughes movie, but, uh, that's my favorite John Hughes movie because I think he did that story right, rather than succumb to the pressures of test audiences for Pretty in Pink. Uh, but yeah, they had a cameo in that, though. That was with a different... Um, woman singer. That was with Cleo. Uh, Rosie had gone off to go do other things, but she has since rejoined. And um, one of their songs is Radiant Boy, and that is painted on the back of my leather jacket. Um, Radiant under, on top, boy underneath, a large Luna moth. <sighs> because I am just that spooky okay. Uh N is for Nosferatu, one of many uh, gothic rock bands from the 90s named after vampires. I am not kidding. People like to go on about, oh, vampires got nothing to do with goth. I'm like, well, except when they do. Like, <laughs> and that's another video for another time. I've got a lovely list of that. Uh, Nosferatu were definitely a staple on several gothic rock compilations, and where the hell did that box go? I have a box with CDs, and it is now nowhere to be seen by me. I'll find it. It hasn't left this apartment. I know that much for sure. Uh, they were a staple on many compilations from uh, Cleopatra and Jungle Records in the 1990s. Uh, oh, we've got two ladies best known uh, for their work with Roz Williams. We've got Eva O. Oh, we've got Alma Wen. And it was hard for me to pick uh, one of those two, but then again, I listed two for B, didn't I? So I can do both, because it's my video and I make the rules. Ah, uh, Eva O. Oh, she is... The She is the queen of death rock, though a lot of people will say that is, uh, that is Dinah Cancer. Uh, there can be two queens. There can be two queens. Because I said. I don't think... I, I think they're both terminally heterosexual, but that's okay. Two queens can rule as sisters. <laughs> Uh, Eva, oh, she was in bands such as Superhero and Shadow Project. Uh, she had a brief born-again Christian phase. All things considered, it was ra rather brief. But uh, she has since outgrown that, thank goodness. Because uh, while, that, while that was fairly entertaining uh, for a bit, the, the music was not great. The music was not great. I do have that album. I do. Um, when, uh, she is, she is, she's wonderful. She's one of my, uh, favorite, um, dark avant-garde musicians. Uh, she's done a lot of, uh, stream of consciousness kinds of compositions. Uh, her most recent album out right now is on Bandcamp. It is called Tiamat. Uh, it is, of course, based on the Sumerian, I believe Sumerian, Mesopotamian 
deity. Um, and uh, with um, uh, she's also done a lot of music referencing water and the ocean. Originally from Detroit, uh, became associated with Roz Williams when she was living in San Francisco, I believe. There were a few years Roz was based out of San Francisco rather than L.A. Long story, I don't know all of it, but, um, but yeah, she, uh, she, she became associated with Roz and one of his various collaborators of sorts with, um, P.E. and other things, um, when, uh, when they were both based out of San Francisco. And she's currently residing in Cornwall, where she, um, gets a lot of, uh, where she's done some work as an actress as well as an artist, and, of course, her music. Ah, P would be for Psychic TV. Oh my gosh. So much to pick from. There were, oh gosh. Oh, and I'm brain farting on the title now, but it was kind of a staple of my show when I was on WCBN Ann Arbor. And another band that has been that has been a staple of compilations of gothic rock and industrial and weird dark music from the uh during the 1990s, featuring uh, Genesis Peoridge and their late partner, uh, Lady J. Briar Peoridge. And, again, one of just everything Genesis Peoridge does is amazing. I probably could have put Genesis Peoridge, you know, as in surname p dash Uh but, you know, I, Eva O was her surname, so uh, the O is for Ortiz. Uh, but, you know, what, what are you gonna do? I don't know, I, I could try to narrow down anything that Genesis Peorge has done, and it's fabulous. And, of course, there's gonna be somebody going that's like, well, you know, Psychic TV, they're a little bit more in the, on the industrial rocks. I'm like, yeah, who cares? Who cares? Goths love Genesis Peorge. <laughs> Seriously, we do. It's amazing. It's, it's... Thankfully, more of us love Genesis Peorage than there are goths who love Boyd Rice. God damn, I can't stand him. Ah, uh, Q. I was I was kind of stuck for a minute, but um, I uh, I could go with uh, Q Lazarus, uh, but uh, they they literally um, have. Uh, they've literally recorded only two songs that have gotten any recognition at all um, on a release. Uh, but another uh, group that is probably far more active than Q Lazarus has ever been, honestly, uh, is Q and Tal. Q N T A L. Uh, they had a lot released via Project Records, or at least distro via Project Records. Uh, I would call them a pagan dark wave band. They uh, they are very goth friendly, and their albums are these uh, neoclassical sort of movements. Uh, they've done a Tristan and Isolde. They've done they've done, um, and their albums are just titled like Q and Tall One. Two, three, four. I think they're up to five now, uh, and just wonderful. If you like uh, neoclassical and dark wave, I would highly recommend Q and Tall. Uh, R would be for that other of the um, Leeds bands that became. Uh, known for that quintessential gothic rock sound, which would be Red Lorry, Yellow Lorry. We've got Monkeys on Juice, we've got Walking on My Hands, we've got so many wonderful songs coming off from there, from them. They have reformed in the last few years, and uh, they've been threatening to go on tour almost as long, but I don't know if they're going to be coming to the States anytime soon. I would love it if they did. I would. I would love it. S, we've got another Pagan Darkwave musician. I'm sorry, we all know the other big S. 
So, let me talk about Sephora Turnus. Oh my gosh. Uh, one of the few um, Sephora Turnus songs that I can get away with playing at a club night would be uh, Penance and Pain. Um, this is the project where the only constant human member, and there's a whole lot of story about that. <laughs> uh, all of us, all of us hardcore longtime fans of Support Turnus have no idea where to begin with, with that, but it, uh, the Support Turnus and the Ensemble of Shadows is the, uh, is a band where the, where the only constant human member is Anna Varni Cantodea. Uh, she is a delightfully scary, uh, German contralto, <laughs> who is also a trans woman. She's had a few songs about it. And, uh, and just, and just wonderful, and I would say her music is in the, is in the medieval-inspired neoclassical pagan dark wave sort of thing. Very, very goth. Very much so. Oh my gosh. Um, one of the last issues of Ghastly, there's an interview with her in there. One of the few she's ever given. And it's wonderful. Ah, T, we've got a reason for some people to get on my case. Uh, because I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Typo negative. Ah, uh, when... If you were a high school goth in the Midwest in the mid-1990s, Peter Steele was a bit of a staple on the uh, on the talk show circuit. I remember very clearly this episode of Sally Jesse Raphael that he was on, and uh, he was a, he was apparently a staple at the Goth Nights in New York City at the time as well. Uh, but uh, but yeah, he was he was that shred of authenticity that when you were a high school goth in the Midwest. Um, you you prayed for that kind of authenticity. Like, occasionally you might be able to get up to a real city, especially if you went to a rural high school. Uh, occasionally you were able to get to a real city where they might have had a Tower Records or some other funky hole-in-the-wall sort of record s store um, that would get, you know, the magazines where you could, like, you know, go to the back pages and find all the little mail-order slips and everything and be like, hey, project, send me a catalog. Um... And then you would, like, check off the ones and maybe save up money for months, you know, at a time just to get, like, five CDs. Uh, but, um, when we, when we weren't, when we weren't scouring the, uh, the magazines, we would, like, we, oh my gosh, I'm so, I'm so kicking myself. I, like, I just tossed out all of my tapes without going through them some years ago, and now I'm kind of kicking my ass, but if somebody... I, I believe one of those big tosses was uh, shortly before I moved into this place that I'm at now. So if you were going, uh, if you were going bin picking on the at uh, around uh, Washington and Pearl Street in um, Ypsilanti, and you found some of my tapes, and one of them would have had this old typo negative interview from I believe '95, maybe '96. It was uh, shortly before, no, shortly after the October Rust album came out. No, it would have been just before. It would have been just before. It was this radio interview from WIOT in Toledo, or possibly WRIF out of Detroit. One of those two active rock stations. Um, but you know, and and because Peter Steele, we would like wait up. I I would I would tell my stepmother I cannot come to dinner. <laughs> I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the interview with typo negative and she's like that where interview is not going to be for two hours dinner is right now <laughs> but uh but yeah he was that shred of authenticity that we always always sought um if if Peter Steele told us to listen to it we would goddamn listen to it if this was one of his favorite bands which would include uh Lacia and others I know I know he pitched Alien Sex Fiend a couple times um so, yeah, um, I mean, and yeah, I, I went, to, I spent my summers in London with my eldest half-sister and my brother-in-law, but, 
Um, but still, like, I, there was still like nine other months out of the year where I was looking for that kind of, that, that, that authentically goth, <laughs> um, yeah, advocate that, you know, would be able to get and reach us and, um, and Peter Steele was it. And if you're unfamiliar with any of Typo Negative's most popular songs, you haven't been on YouTube look enough, just long enough, just look them up. Just, <laughs> um, you would be for Unto Ashes, another one of those, uh, 90s, um, bands that would seem, seemingly alternated between, um, between gothic rock and dark wave, and they sort of, at some point, they were clearly bringing the two together, and... It's been forever since I've listened to them, so I should do that after I'm done filming, shouldn't I? Uh, v, we've got one of my qu ultimate favorites would be Virgin Prunes. Uh, some of their most popular songs would be Sweet Home Under White Clouds, Baby Turns Blue, uh, Caucasian Walk, Walls of Jericho. They have influenced and inspired such bands as uh, Cinema Strange, and, uh, Bloody Dead and Sexy, and myself, even. Uh, Gavin Friday is still very active in music, uh, today, even though, um, like, his, his new material has been a little bit far between, but he's still very much active in the, uh, in the, in the Dublin, um, art and music scene, and absolutely wonderful genuine person he is, and he's he's been in a few films, too. He was uh, very, very briefly in Disco Pigs, and that movie is messed up. <laughs> there are so many Irish films that are just messed up. Uh, he was also uh, had a um, prominent role in Breakfast on Pluto, starring Killian Murphy. Uh, w would be for Roz Williams, who... Uh, was a founding member of Christian Death, Shadow Project, Docus Carada, uh, Premature Ejaculation, which was his industrial noise band, as and did a lot of solo work, often in the spoken word uh, medium. Uh, he did many performances with the Jeton de Mon, and was... Oh, one of those genuine souls, a little too sensitive for this world, even though he often sought to shock and provoke. Um, uh, at the at the end of the day, um, he was also very. very much himself, which was a little bit much. Ah, X, you've got Small Deutschland, uh, who did a song called Incubus Succubus, uh, to, to reference something we mentioned earlier. Uh, another, um, Neudorschwell, uh, gothic band. Uh, just absolutely wonderful, wonderful classic gothic rock sound coming out of Germany. Um, uh, why we've got, uh, a word that does have a lot to do with goth, or rather, um, I guess like dark synth pop. Uh, I'm, n I'm a little less inclined to call her music dark wave. I would say dark synth pop is probably the better description. We've got Yendry. Uh, she is German, I believe. Another interview from uh, an issue of Ghastly, I believe. Either Ghastly or Carpe Noctum. I'm gonna, f I'm gonna figure out which one it is after I, um, after I'm able to get to my magazine hoard. Um, uh, check out her band camp. One of my favorites that uh, she's done is, uh, I'm, I'm not okay, and 
she's, she's a very, very introspective musician who does all of that. And Z would be for Zero Lacriche, probably best known for their song Last Year's Wife, which was on one of Mick Mercer's gothic rock compilations, um, an anthology including uh, previously unreleased songs of theirs, uh, has been released on Cherry Red Records since, I want to say, 2010 that came out. Uh, I, I got it. I absolutely fell in love with it when I did. So, uh, one of those incredibly underrated bands. They should have done more and been more than they were, but uh, alas, it was not you know, meant to be, but uh, I, th I think we're a little worse off for that. So, there we go. And that's, and that's only 26 wonderful bands that, oh, that, that can really, that I would say will be great for starting you on your journey for uh, gothic music besides... Uh, Sisters of Mercy and um, and a lot of other staples right now. Uh, she passed away is kind of a staple at this point, but like I said, everything I've listed here, uh, I would recommend go check them all out and uh, take care of yourselves and uh, bats and kisses, son.